Hello students, welcome back to health class, to health class. So today uh, we're looking at a new topic. We already, we already finished the other topic last time. Um, so firstly, I want us to quickly look at what we'll need to do there. So we, we did chapter three, we completed. We completed chapter three and there's two pages, page 46 and page 47, which is 10 multiple choice questions, 10 multiple choice questions that I want us to do for homework. Uh, please also complete all the questions, write your name and nickname plus number on every page. Write your name, nickname and number on every page. And when you are finished, please send it to us so that uh, we can have a look at it. It's a bit smaller, so it fits in the Okay, so just 10 questions, it's not a lot. Uh, if you don't, if you can't remember, just quickly go through your chapter again. All the answers is in the work that we did. So if you are not sure, just go back and have a look at the work that we did do. You will find all your answers there. <clears throat> okay. But for today, we're going to move on with a new chapter, Unit 4. Problem solving among family members and friends. Now, this is a very important concept and a very important topic to talk about. Because in our families and with our friends, we will not always agree on everything. Sometimes they want us to do something that we don't want to do. Or sometimes something happens and we maybe lose trust or faith in that person and we don't trust them anymore. So it's important for us to understand and to know how do we deal with certain things that happen in our families and friend groups. So we'll have a look at that and look at how we can solve problems effectively and also make sure that we understand why some of these problems actually occur. A lot of the times it's just a lack of communication, not speaking to each other or not talking about the problem and just waiting for it to go away. We know in Thailand that a lot of times we have a big concept called loss of face and this can also cause a lot of problems with, in our family groups and with our friends. So let's look at some of the concepts that they are going to share with us today. So family members and friends, let's first look at our vocabulary, our vocabulary for today. First word we have is an argument. I want all of us to say together with me, argument, argument. So everyone repeat after me, argument. Argument. Yes, an argument. Lead together. Everyone. Oh. Argument. If you look at the people that are doing well in our tests, it's always the ones that participate. The ones that don't talk and don't speak up in the class always struggle when we have to answer questions. So argument, what is an argument? It is when two people do not agree. They are talking, but they do not agree. And then they start arguing. They start talking to each other in a very higher pitched voice, almost screaming at each other. And also sometimes using a lot of rude words to get their point across. An argument is something we try and avoid. We do not want to get into an argument. The next one is disagree. All together, disagree. Disagree. Again, disagree. Ag agree. Ag disagree. Yes, very good. Disagree. Now, what disagree means is when I say I believe in something, or I say something, uh, this, the grass in my house is pink. 
and you do not think it is true or you do not believe me, you can tell me, no, it's not pink. It has to be green. So you disagree with me. You do not share the same opinion. We are disagreeing. Okay. The next one is discuss. Everyone all together, discuss. 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 All together, all together, yeah. Discuss. Discuss. Yes. So what is what is the what does it mean to discuss or to have a discussion? It means to sit and talk about something. So let's say we have a class project where we have to do something in a group. Then we have to sit in the group and talk to each other to find out what we are going to do. So then we are discussing what to do. It's a discussion, two people talking about something. They discuss something. Provoke. So next one, all together, provoke. 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 Yes. Now provoke is an interesting word. Um, it is used when we try and get a response. So let's say you are talking to your friend. Uh, you, are, you want to talk to your friend, but he's busy and he doesn't want to talk to you. Maybe you may be angry. So then you start pushing him, pushing him. Hey, 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 hey. What you are doing is you are irritating him. You are doing something he does not like or she does not like. So you provoke them. You make them, you do something to them so that they will do something back. It's provoke in that sense. So you, if, if, if I keep punching my friend, hey, 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 what are you doing, what are you doing? Hey, what are you doing, what are you doing? He's going to get irritated and angry and then maybe try and punch me back. So I provoke him. I do something bad to someone to get a bad response. So to say a bad word to someone so that they can say a bad word back to you. That's called provoke. And the next one is resentment. Resentment. All together, resentment. Resentment. Very good. Resentment. That is, the, uh, that is an emotion, resentment. It's an emotion uh, when you do something and you didn't actually want to do it. Maybe you did something because you were angry and then you shut the door in someone's face and then you feel bad after you did it. When you do something bad and you feel bad about it, you resent your decision to do it. So that is an emotion, which is an emotion that makes you feel sad and, and depressed inside because you're like, why did I do that? I, want, I didn't want to do that, but you did it out of maybe anger or fear, or maybe you were just too happy and then you accidentally broke your phone and then you feel resentment yes. because your phone is broken. So that's what resentment feels like. It's a very bad emotion. It's like, oh, come on, why? I never broke my phone. Very good. I never. One day, one day, one day it will broke, break. It is inevitable. One day it will. So just take care, <gasps> care of it when you can. One day in future? Maybe. Maybe it will just stop working because it might get too old. Or maybe it falls. No? But the moment I, when your phone uh, breaks, you feel... Teacher. Yes. Teacher, uh, I did... Teacher, I just angry. I didn't work my phone. Yes, but if... To, to, to explain the word resentment is if you are angry and then you break your phone, then you will feel bad. Like, oh man, now I have no phone. So that emotion we call resentment. You feel bad for doing something stupid in, 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 in plain English. Our last one is violence. Violence. All together, yeah? Violence. Violent. 
violence. What is violence? Uh, have, have you guys? Uh, yes. Anyone? Uh, 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 what What is violence? Uh, hmm. Have you guys ever watched a uh, American movie which says maybe PG thirteen well, with violence? It's, it's, it's um, uh, strong language. Have you seen this in movies before? Grab, grabness, hardness, harshness, heat, oddness, violence. Uh, yes, that is just synonyms of violence. That's not explaining violence, yes, but that is words which also describe violence. Being harmful yes. is uh, also a violent word. Look at the top or left it's, of the of screen. Uh, have you guys ever yeah, seen yeah. this in movies? We can look at the top left. Have you seen this PG-13, VL? So usually put a couple in there. S -O -V -L. Have you seen this in movies? What? Like this logo before movies starts. American movies, they usually put a PG-13. PG is the parental guidance. So they say not for person under the age of 13. And this movie contains violence, language, nudity, and sex. That's usually the, the ones that they show. Now, this V is for violence, which means people are going to hurt each other. They're either going to fight or beat each other up, or they're going to maybe shoot somebody, or they're going to mainly cause harm to other people. That's violence. If I go up, if I go to the, on the street and I see someone on the street, and they walk too close to me and I turn around and just punch them in the face. If, if, if I punch them, it's violence and it's very bad. We should not resort to violence. We should always try and find a calm way of dealing with a situation. Because violence, a lot of the time, is very bad and it can cause you to go to jail or can cause you a lot of problems in the future. So we always try and solve a problem without violence, if we can, without violence. Okay, so that's our six vocabulary words on the first page here. So let's look at, on the left, what, 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 what do they tell us here? Now, desirable responses in problem solving among family members. Now, desirable, desirable responses means um, the best outcome, the best response, the best way, the best way we want it. So problem solving amongst family members. <clears throat> so this is a, how we're going to go. And then we have undesirable responses, um, things you don't want to happen in problem solving amongst family members. And then problem solving amongst friends, we also have two desirable and undesirable responses. So let's see what some of these responses are. Huh. So problem solving amongst family members. Let's first look at our family because the family is a little bit different than your friends. Because in the family, yes, you have people older than you, like your mom, your dad, your grandparents or aunts and uncles. Uh, you might have also um, brothers or sisters or cousins that are older than you. You might also have brothers or sisters and cousins or whatever that is younger than you. So there's usually always an age difference and that makes problem solving a little bit more difficult. Usually with your friends, most of your friends are at the same level as you are. So it's usually easier to resolve these issues. And a lot of the times uh, in families, Parents do not speak to their children. All they do is they tell them what to do. You do this, you do that, you do this without discussing it with them. That can cause a lot of problems. Kids will resent their families later on. So let's read here. Problem solving amongst family members. Let's see, should be interesting. Everybody has different responsibilities as a family member. Sometimes conflict arises because of disagreement and misunderstanding amongst family members. And if the conflict continues without a proper solution, 
it may become worse. So we always need to try and solve the problem as soon as possible. So let's look at some desirable responses, the positive ones, the, the type of answers or ways we want to solve the problem. Okay, number one, very important one, non-violent practice. Do not start beating up people, do not start throwing things, always resort to non-violent practices. So one, be open-minded to discuss the issue. So we'll be able to talk about, don't be, oh, my way is the only way. Think a little bit outside. Let the other person also speak. Maybe they also have an interesting thing to say. So be open-minded. Be open-minded to discuss the issue. And, and use reason and take into account the house rules. So yes, we all grew up in houses. Um, most, some, some might not have, it's, we're not all that lucky, but most of us grew up in houses and usually the parents in the house set some rules that you have to follow because it is their house you live in, you know? So you have to follow their rules. So also make sure that when you want to solve a problem, that firstly, you are following the house rules. And secondly, be able to talk about it and also be able to listen. Use your ears and listen because you might have a problem, but maybe the other member of the family also has a problem. So you have to both say your problem and also hear the other person's problem. Otherwise, you cannot solve anything if you don't know what is the problem. Number two, solve the problem without using violence, such as beating or hurting others. Yes, use your mouth, use your mouth. This is our strongest tool. The strongest part of our body is the mouth because the words we speak can either be positive and make people happy and excited and make them feel good, or it can be bad, bad, bad. The stuff we can say can ruin people's image of us and ruin relationships if we don't think use our brain and use our tongue to explain don't use our hands and fists to fight no use this one and use your brain your brain is much smarter than your fists are so use your brain and speak and also listen so number three avoid confrontation that could make the conflict worse so leave the scene and talk later after the situation gets better. So let me quickly explain to you how I deal with difficult situations. When I get to a situation and someone makes me very angry, I, I do not like violence, but that is usually what my brain wants to do immediately. If someone makes me angry, now I'm angry. Now I want to fight you. So what I do is I just walk away. And tell them to go away, I'll talk to you later. So then I'll come back when I am calm and when I have all the things in my head that I want to say, then I come back to the person and sit with them and tell them, okay, let's talk about this. I do not want to be violent and we do not have to be. We can always use our mouth to talk. And if the other person doesn't want to listen, like sometimes kids speak to their parents and the parents don't listen to their kids. That's your parents' fault, not your fault. But you should try and say what you want to say in a manner that they will listen to. If you say it uh, or you start screaming at your parents, they will not listen to what you say. So you sit down and you talk to them. And if they tell you no, then you ask them why. And if they tell you because we are your parents, you tell them it's not good enough. You are guys are becoming young adults now. You are moving into your teenager years and you're becoming more mature. So your parents should be able to speak to you about more mature topics. So if certain things you want to discuss with them, make sure you do it in a very well respected manner. If it's a difficult conversation, make it so that you show a lot of respect towards them while talking to them. And nine times out of 10, they will also give you 
the feedback that you require if you speak in a proper manner and not scream or shout in, in that sense okay number four 1.4 learn to forgive and to listen to others do not take revenge now for most of us forgiveness is something you learn you learn to forgive not all of us are born with forgiveness you have to learn it we all are capable of forgiving but most of us we first have to learn it before we can give it to someone so don't take revenge don't think oh you ate my chocolate in the fridge i'm going to eat your krapau before you can get to it don't take revenge don't don't do eye for an eye that's an english i do an eye for an eye makes the world blind which means if i do something bad to you you do something bad to me then the whole world will be one bad place well if you do something bad to me and you say that you are sorry and you 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 feel ashamed of what you have done i can say i forgive you but it's not only forgiving we have to forgive and forget if you forgive someone for what they have done then you also have to forget what they have done otherwise you cannot truly forgive okay our second main point they talk about here is positive communication positive communication so one do not respond with offensive words do not use bad words when you speak to family members they are your family you have to be kind towards them children in particular should respect their elders yes you have to respect your elders but you should also understand that the reason why we have to respect our elders <laughs> firstly they have been on this planet for a long time they know a lot more than you do so that's why we treat them with respect because they have the knowledge and we want the knowledge and we want them to share it but if we don't treat our elders with respect how will they share their knowledge with us or how will they give us more life lessons if we don't even respect them so it's very important respect your elders number number, number two yeah learn to say sorry if you have done something wrong sorry is just one word there's many words in in the english dictionary that you can use to say sorry All right apologizing is a good thing but do not just apologize if you are not wrong don't just say sorry because that will not solve anything that will not solve anything if you did something wrong and someone else says i saw you you did that that is wrong tell them yes i'm sorry i did that I will not do it again the other thing is to say please and thank you in english we have please and thank you where i think i think if i if i know the thai phrases for please and thank you is mostly ka for women and kap for men or krap those are the two ones in english we use please and thank you mostly where in thai we use ka and krap so there is a very easy explanation for you guys if you say please and thank you you are respecting the other person and you're also being kind so they will also treat you kindly back and also say you're welcome or that's not a problem come to us anytime you need anything you know if you treat people good you can build good relationships and later on in life they might help you if you are in a difficult situation so learn to say sorry if you have done something wrong and say thank you when you are receiving help from others and number 3 use reason it makes your explanation better hmm it's a what does this mean use reason hmm let me explain so i'll give you an example we have one chocolate 
we have two people we have to share it so you cut a bigger piece for yourself and give me the small one now i'm angry now i want to complain do not just say why is yours bigger than mine let me also have another piece no tell them give me the two chocolate bars let me put them together let me show you Reason. let me show you why is my chocolate so small your chocolate so big no cut your chocolate shorter and give me more use your brain when you talk to someone if there's a difficult topic think about why do you feel this way think about it and say it but don't scream or don't get too excited and angry just be calm and tell your story the most important thing for me I don't see it in the book here, is be honest, tell the truth. The truth is the best thing that you can do, even if it means that you might get into trouble. If you lie, your problems become 10 times worse. So speaking the truth, even if you are in, in, in the, even if you are wrong in what you are doing, speaking the truth will make people believe you and also trust you to know that okay you did something wrong but at least you were honest and truthful and you spoke the truth it gives a lot people have a lot more respect for you if you are truthful if you start lying people will not listen to you anymore because you just lie and lie and lie what do you say is the truth that's one big thing so tell the truth wherever you can never lie lying is bad really bad especially for relationships it can break a lot of trusts and friendships i also lost friends because when i was younger i also lied and some of my friends lied and that caused us to not be friends anymore because i cannot believe what you are telling me because most of the things you say is a lie okay number three the bottom here listen to different opinions yes you see everyone does everyone have these two things at the side of the head do you have these yes what are these called you can tell me what do we call these things at the side of our heads anyone what do we call this what what is this called Ears. A ear. So we have two ears. Please use them. Please use them. They are not just there to look beautiful or to make your face look nice. No, we have to use them. So when someone speaks to you, use your ears and listen. Because only when you listen without wanting to say something back is when you truly hear what they say. Remember, there's also a difference between listening and hearing. I can hear someone speaking or I'm listening to what they say. Very big difference. So use these big things that sometimes we misplace for statues on our ears. Because I know not all of us like to listen. Even when I was a young boy, I did not like to listen. I was probably the most disobedient child ever. I was a very naughty kid, very naughty. And uh, I also have some of the biggest ears. And my dad used to always grab me by my ear and pull me, tell me, are these things statues? Are they statues? And then, no, he's like, then use them. Use them. Listen. So the first one, the head of the family should not use their superior authority to put an end to the conflict. So your parents should not tell you, I'm your parent, go sit down. What I say is, is, is the only way. No, that does not work in today's life anymore. When you were younger, yes, no technology. We could do that. But the kids are, you guys are a lot smarter now than I was when I was 12, 13, 11, 12, 13 years old. Because I didn't have a cell phone. I only had my first cell phone when I was 16 years old. So... We don't have all the internet and the, and, the, and the stuff. Some of us there didn't even have TVs growing up. There wasn't even a TV, not even, only, only a small little radio. 
but with the world moving forward, we have a lot more knowledge, information. And our parents should not tell us, listen here, I am your dad, go sit down because I say so. You have to, you are allowed to ask them, but why is this situation handled like this? Why do you say that? I want to know because if you know, you understand. And if you understand, you can be respectful towards someone. Okay. Now, other members should be allowed to explain and clarify their positions. Yes. So in a family, everyone should be able to speak and also say what their problem or what problems they feel. And then we discuss them all together. And 3.2, the senior members, which is the older ones in the family, should listen to the younger members and should not dominate the situation. Now, unfortunately, this one is something that is happening in today's life everywhere in the world. It's something I saw in my country when I was growing up and, and uh, as kids are, uh, becoming the world becoming a very soft place for people. People are very soft. So this sentence here, I, I, yes, well, it sounds beautiful to say it this way. This does not happen. Mostly, in most situations in society, the older person will dominate the younger person. It's just the way it is. Just the way it is. Unless you can use your ears to listen and use your mouth and your brain to speak and think about what you say, then you can change that sentence to make it positive. Because if you think clearly what you're going to say and you come with an idea or with evidence or with a reason and it's valid, your parents will listen to you. They might also tell you, yes, I understand that. But you don't understand this part of the situation yet, the other side, which they understand. So you have to talk. Communication is key. Communication is key. <clears throat> page 52. I'm not going to go through page 52. Uh, I think we've said enough for today. Um, just to quickly go back, we have two minutes left. First thing, first important thing, when we solve problems, not, do not use violence. Use your mouth and your ears. Positive communication. Don't use your mouth to scream. Use it to speak calmly and speak positively and then communicate in that way. And last one is listen. Use your big ears in the side of your head. Some of us have bigger ones than others like me. Maybe because I got big ears because when I was young, I didn't listen. But now I love to listen. And that's why my ears are so big from all the listening I do. Okay. So those are just a couple for communicating with our friends and family. Okay. So anyone want to play a bit of rock, paper, scissor? You have one minute to turn on your cameras. You have to be very fast today. Our time is very, no. very low. No. Please remember to do your homework. To do your homework, please remember. I eat it. Eat. Okay, then you don't have to do a rock procedure. Who's with me? Are we ready? Everyone ready? Yeah. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, shoot. I will. Ah. Ah, Jasmine and John Paul. Very good. Very good. Uh, it's okay, Plum. Okay. It's okay. I hit you, Tom Horn. I finished. Let's go. Uh, uh, I, uh, uh, I let. Uh, but, uh, but I choose purple. What you choose? I choose uh, scissor. Oh. No, I choose rock. Oh, no, no. I, no. I, I choose I the rock. Oh, okay, but our time is our video is going to end soon. Oh. Um, I'll speak to you guys oh. tomorrow. Have a great day and see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Remember, remember your homework. Remember the homework. <laughs>